I didn't know we had a pro athlete in the room. I was unaware. Okay. This whole time, I had no idea you could almost bowl 200. Not a single bone in my body wants to go read like every comment. We did the art. We did the fun part. Like I have so much fun reviewing our stuff and hitting publish. In relationships, all I really care about, one is sports, one is learning, and one is laughs. Meanwhile, like said, whatever, with, with this person, easy. Bring it out. Uh, Your girlfriend. Uh, unclear. Oh. Uh oh. Oh, oh, oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> Pack it up. Pack it up. Welcome back to the Smart Nonsense Podcast, where we still talk about entrepreneurship, self-development, and challenging norms. This is episode two, otherwise known as probably like 300, but starting over, starting fresh pop. Um, hey, we're, we're 25 minutes late. That's fine, though. That's oh, wow. fine. <laughs> oh, wow. But it's your time, though. We, I we was, tried to... Uh, no, I was mostly... We got a time better, because we both had nervous poops. Just sequentially, not in parallel. So that was not good. We could have timed that much better. Uh, literally walking in to go on the pod and I see you look at the computer and then close the door. And I sat there for five minutes just looking at was, my sign. That's yeah. There. Yeah. I drank a lot of caffeine and, and then I got nervous for the pod. And, you know, you, you hold a lot of nerves in your gut. And when you hold a lot mm. of nerves in your gut, um, it can trigger a uh, rapid, unscheduled what nice, call dude. Callback. Who subscribed? SmartOnsense.com. <clears throat> what's up, Pop? Uh, we cross promote. Uh, what what's you got up, going on? dude? I, you know, I'm clapping a lot, so I just want to extend that clap one more time. Okay. Uh, cause we got. I didn't know we had a pro athlete in the room. I was unaware. Okay. This whole time, I had no idea you could almost bowl 200. I did almost bowl. Here's the funny thing about us and our friends. I get um. I take a lot of heat for being the non-competitive worst athletic one. Yeah. Our last two trips, I, I came to the conclusion I'm like perfectly Dude. probably above wait, wait. average at sports. I think Can I won we... bowling. I won mini golf. I, I, I kind of suck at tennis. Oh, you, but... you won mini golf too? And I don't play spike ball. Oh, you've been sleeper celled in Chicago. Sleeper. Did we? And here's the crazy thing is uh, complete inversion. Who we thought was the most athletic is now bowling 80. Who is on that? a good oh, day, Kevin. <laughs> you know, she's our only listener. Uh, luckily, these don't get put out there. But really tough performance from Sheev. Um, this this means nothing to anybody because they don't know. No, who but this it's funny. Is. So we have really competitive friends. When we hang out, which was this past weekend, I don't particularly like it. But we only see each other a couple days a year. So apparently, we have to play every <laughs> single sport known to man in that one day. So it's like wake up. Um, Volleyball outdoors for two hours, spike ball in the park for two hours, bowl for two hours. Don't think you're getting a break. Don't think you're getting a break. Straight into drinking games. And here's the thing, too. Like, we have literally no break because it's just back to back things that we can't go home to like clean ourselves after volleyball. So it's literally like Tom's like, guys, you want to jump in the Hudson? And then we just all dive in the river and go immediately to spike ball. And, and there's like a little dinghy raft policeman coming up and be like, get out of the water and all these women are like freaking out on the sidelines they're like what are you doing you're disgusting uh granted i think the that's hudson's mostly not the right color it's not the right color for for something you sh should want to jump into it's like yeah. a, a it's like a deep brown right and it's but... it's not it's not a muddy river <laughs> <laughs> like a shallow muddy river i'll take a deep brown no it's it's deep but it's, it's a deep. huge body of water but uh, no, so, that's sick. Got a uh, parasite, probably. I I'm glad that you're really coming into your own. Uh, it was dangerous because <laughs> for those of you that, that don't know, uh, Belky has a 22% body fat. <laughs> no, uh, it's wait, was it 22? 22% 22 20. of your body is 22. Pure fat. Fuck. That's actually, okay. dude. I never even thought of it. that's a fifth of you is just lard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Um, think about like a 50 percenter though. That's a lot. Right, right. That's a lot. That's when you round up to 100, and then you're just not even a human. Wait, so I have, um, I have one more thought about the, the crazy competitive friends doing all the sports I don't like to play. Mm -hmm. um, we'll finally come back from all that. And I'm, I'm, I'm actually pretty introverted, so I just want to like sit and like muck around <laughs> on my phone a little bit, read. And I hear yeah. in the distance, every time, dude, every time, you sit down after six hours of playing sports, and then Sheev, our friend, the human golden retriever, is just like, ah, 
you just hear him. You just hear him right. sigh in the background, like ah, how. How are we going to get energy up? And I'm like, no, <laughs> dude, get it down, dude. He's like, what? He's like, he's like, uh, Henry, like, what? What game would would you want to play that would get energy up? I'm like, get. I want energy <laughs> down. Right, right. Because here's the thing: we just played like ten hours straight of sports, and now from waking up to a little bit past dinner time, we're like, okay, we have this party because it's our friend Ice. It's his twenty second. He rented out this place or whatever, which is uh, going to go till three in the morning. Right, we right. have a party from 10 p.m. till three in the morning, and now now it's like 8 p.m. So you're tasked with the challenge of, okay, if you get to last till three in the morning, what is the best way to get there? For the golden retriever, it's just fucking take it to another level. <laughs> just keep going. You got to ride that wave. For others, it's just like paddle in, rest on the beach, and then go conserve. back out for surf later. You got to conserve. Conserve. I'm like, let me conserve, and he's he's like. No, I know this great drinking game. It's called, um, like, uh, Hear Ye Viking or some shit. And he just, he's like, here are the rules. He's just like, there's just too many rules. I'm like, Shut it down. <laughs> right. If you had to Shut say here down. are the rules, it's too many rules. Shut it down. It's a made up uh, game about being a Viking. And then, you have, yeah. and then you have two people next to you that have to, like, canoe while you're drinking. It was, like, the most ridiculous uh, thing I've ever heard. I don't heard. even think I got to that game. <laughs> I no, you were there. diddling on your phone, conserving energy. Uh, you got to. Um, <laughs> we're thinking formats. I don't know what this is. Um, hey, I have something. Sisyphus uh, is a thread because, okay, so we haven't written anything. Our only job pretty much is to make sure Clip the company doesn't die <laughs> and then to write. And Clipped was kind of dying mm. for a couple weeks, so we haven't written in a couple weeks. And I realized, so there's this myth of Sisyphus, right? And I usually call you Sisyphus because well, <laughs> I'll explain. So in the myth of Sisyphus, I don't know what he did. Are you reading? So bad. No. Oh, I'm it looked like you were about to read the myth the of Sisyphus. Okay. No, I don't know it. But he did something super bad. And he was subjected to an eternity of pushing a giant rock up a hill. And mm. every night he he gets the, the boulder up to the top of the hill. He goes to sleep. He wakes up. The boulder's at the bottom of the hill because that's his eternity. Mm. That's how I feel about habits, Pop. So ah. <laughs> you're Sisyphus because well, you don't really like habits so much. You don't like to have any you, – you, you don't want any kind of like formulaic predictability about your day because like that sucks. Mm. You have to do this at 8, 9, 10, 12. Yeah. Um, I like that too. The problem is without habits, you're just Sisyphus. So st- trying to write yesterday for the first time in two weeks, uh. quite – Quite possibly the hardest thing I've ever done in my entire life. And it's the right. easiest job. And, and, and you you haven't been writing. Is that because one, you're, you're salvaging uh, any company stuff plus traveling? Oh, yeah, we were traveling too. Yeah, it was salvaging, comp- it was salvaging company stuff and launching the Smart Nonsense newsletter. Mm. Yeah, I looked in our Google Doc. Because basically how it works is we have uh, everything. We just have a big queue of stuff to get done. And we're pretty much out of the queue for both the newsletter and shorts, or it's like skimping in each. We haven't really added to that. Worst in the last place month. you want to be, queueless. Right, queueless. And uh, and yesterday we were supposed to start building on the queue because it's queueless, and Belky couldn't get it done. And I've never heard those words really. Usually it comes from me. I crack. I have some sort of uh, issues. But I I if I was Scott Free, is that the, who's Scott? Uh, the Scots, the Scottish. Oh really? That's a Did short, that dude. That's a short. That's a dude. short. That's sick. Scott, who's dude, Scott? I hate when people pitch me shorts, though. Actually, I don't. It's not that bad. It's no, just like it's half of funny. Them, um, half of, half them, of them, suck. them suck, and I have to tell them that they suck. But <laughs> half the time, we go on a little group rabbit. Like I'll be at a dinner with friends, mm-hmm. and someone will just ask why something is the way it is, and then they're like short, and I'm like that. That actually is a short. Yeah, that, dude. That 100%. It's percent. There are a couple things like uh, having. Having things that are easy to talk about, like, uh, it's just like, okay, so there's this thing in, like, the dark arts where you'd wear, like, some piece of clothing that's easily commentable. commentable. Uh, I never did that, but, like, seeing it with my Super 73, whenever I get in an elevator, instantly, like, zero awkwardness because they're like, nice bike, how's fast, how, how fast it go? <laughs> and I'm like, it goes fast. Or dude. how much does it cost? All right. Well, that's, that depends on their race. But, that does depend uh, on their race. It's actually crazy. Like that stereotype. 100% of the time. 100%. Every person that 
ever asked how much it is is always black and then can confirm it's it's always like speed and range for white people. I think we've talked about this on the pod. I will, we have, get, I will get stopped on the street by a car. They will roll down their window, a couple of black people, and they're like, hey, how much that thing? I'm like, do <laughs> right. I say the real number? You don't. Do I, do I fib can't. a little bit? I usually, you gotta say, I usually underfib. I usually you underfib. Gotta underfib. Say a couple hundred bucks <laughs> and guard a loop be on your way, uh, especially time. when you, you work in the ghetto. Um, but you're no longer there, Not so anymore. that's awesome. You made it up. Not anymore. You might, you might have to go back. But um, the point was, that's easy to comment on. And being a YouTuber that makes shorts, super easy to comment on because people are always like, why don't you make a short on salmon? <laughs> salmon, do you ever eat tuna? <laughs> Tuna's good. Do salmon that. Salmon is not naturally pink. It's gray. Uh, so you could do you a short You took that from that. one of our clients. Um, I didn't mean to, to take over so, your thing. Uh, well, okay, my point was, my point was for that thread, today I'm back in the habit of writing first thing in the morning, like 90 minutes, two hours. So much easier. It's like day two was easier. Day three then gets easier. Day four is easier. And so I think like you kind of see this with like Casey Neistat's daily vlog. Once he stopped daily vlogging, he could never do it again. Mm. But when you're in it, when you've got the flywheel and the momentum going with you, it's not super hard. But yeah. Well, so I got, I'm trying to write right now. I'm on my second short. Yesterday I finished mine. I, I did my task for the day. But I don't like feeling like it's a task for the day. I like right. going in and be like, I hope to get one. But if I just get stoked about this one little rabbit hole, I can just dive down that and you won't see me for That's 24 to 48 sucks. hours. I would, I like the same. That's why I want to be like, 10 days ahead yeah. because then if you yeah, I don't like the feeling of maybe you just don't got it that day and you that's don't. fine too but when you're well, on the precipice of the queue and you don't write and people are relying on you to keep putting stuff out like that's that's a bad feeling so here's my I don't I don't want to go uh meta on this but this podcast I never liked scheduling it because I'm like, when the juice is there, the juice is there, and you just rip. But that that's difficult when you have a schedule. So now I'm like, well, so oh, does here's, this, here's, does this well, feel here's, too forced? No, here's kind of an interesting thing is like, I guess this is my point, but I think schedule stuff and quantity begets quality. And I kind of got this from Colin and Samir, but they were like, their scheduled podcast, it like, you kind of need to go into autopilot for some things. You need to not think about them. Like we need to just, you have the scheduled thing you show up for and then genius or creativity comes out of that scheduled thing. Uh. So like for Colin and Samir, they often have trouble figuring out what their next main channel video is going to be. But they always have the scheduled podcast they don't miss. And even on their worst days when they're doing the scheduled podcast, that's where they like accidentally come up with stuff that then happens on the main channel. Uh, so maybe it's maybe you need a balance. You need the the scheduled riffraff, but then you don't want to go too scheduled with like the super creative rabbit holes. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I, the, the problem is when this wasn't scheduled, we just didn't do it. Period. Well, yeah, yeah, and then and we get teed up, and then be an hour and a half podcast, and no one, no one really needs that. Um, <laughs> Give me a thread. I got a fucking, I got eight of them. Um, hold Can on, I, dude. Let me give you another short one. Let me give you a, this one's really short. So uh, we love MVPs, minimum viable mm -hmm. products. So we launched our newsletter about ten days ago. One of the funniest things that that's happening with it right now is people literally can't unsubscribe from it. Ah. There is no mechanism, which is illegal. There is no <laughs> mechanism to unsubscribe from our newsletter. The link's broken. The website, the, the, everything's broken. The domain's broken. But it's like you get the thing out there. We're still publishing stuff. It's still going. People are still reading it. But that's like the, a beautiful MVP, which is Dude, it's, like, it's yeah, literally it doesn't like, work. I, I remember I tried to make a newsletter uh, like three years ago, I guess at the start of the pandemic. And I was like super stressed <laughs> about having – making sure that my um, my address was at the bottom or address, depending on where you're from. Uh, and and I'm mom's? like, oh, dude, 
yeah, I'm going to be like, it's illegal if I don't include this. And then what happens if I, I get reported? Where am I going to go? I have to get trademarks for the name Smart Nonsense. And it's like, it don't matter. It really don't matter. <laughs> well, what's funny is the people that really, really, really want to unsubscribe find a way to contact us and we can manually unsubscribe. Well, it's not that hard. You just have to reply to the email and be like, can, can you get me off this yeah. fucking list? Uh, it's just but funny. It's like, because it's it would actually take us it's taken us like a week to figure out this problem. It's kind of difficult. Oh, you figured it out? Half yesterday. I'm still waiting That's, to hear. Your it's macro. one click button. There's no half, dude. It's all or <laughs> well, nothing. It's, now the page is 404 error, but it's going to the right. Oh, that's closer. Area. Yeah, it goes to Beehive now. Nice. Anyway, um, yeah. So what? Were we gonna wait another two weeks and fix that? It's like no, just, just get no, it out with bugs. It, let her rip. It's kind of like marriage, too, where you're like, fuck, it's not a one-click unsubscribe, so let me just give it another shot. And then maybe we come through. And then maybe you're like, you know what? This relationship was worth it. Let me stay in it. Uh, so maybe we stay illegal. Who knows? <laughs> but, um, uh, dude, I uh, I got threads, but that's on a... I don't know if... Oh, no. Dumb it's nonsense? It's threads, dude. Not allowed to get into oh, that. Oh, yeah, dumb, dumb nonsense, nonsense, dude. Um. It's, I meant, it's yeah, no, that's dumb nonsense. We can't. But um, we can't. Did we go over our buckets of life? I forget if we did that. Yeah, I got three <laughs> buckets I, of life. <laughs> what <laughs> right now? <laughs> what are you talking about? Well, I have like three buckets that matter to me in life, and almost nothing else does. I we might have gone over that. I think we might have gone over head. it. I know. I think we did on the last pod. I really couldn't tell you. But it's, well, give give me yours, and I'll maybe I'll remember. It, it's kind of dumb nonsense related, but it's like okay, what's um, or maybe I just talked about this with like oh I think I talked about it with Sheev. Okay, so this is what was stupid, dude. We have our fucking friends friends meet up, right? Everyone comes in for the weekend. We all hang out. For some reason, everyone comes in Friday, but Sheev comes in Thursday, and so yes, sir. so now he's staying at my place, and well, he's the golden retriever. He's the so golden that's why retriever. he comes in Thursday. He's just ready to play games. Right. And and I've, meanwhile, like, said whatever with, with this person. Easy. Bring it out. Uh, Your girlfriend. Uh, unclear. Oh. Uh-oh. Oh, uh -oh. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> she was your girlfriend last episode and when I met her over the weekend. Unclear, dude. Oh. Pack it up. Two days pack, later. Pack um, it up, dude. So I was supposed to do things with other friends and... um. And he comes in. He's like, dude, I'm, I'm in. I'm in. It's 9 p.m. I, I was doing some like escape room thing. Now I, I'm making this person super upset because I oh, have this person. spontaneous plan. I didn't tell them about easy this person did them. And now I have to go back to my house to then go to the bar and talk to this person. Chief uh, turned out to be really fun. Uh, I actually knew nothing about him. And he is one of our best <laughs> friends. So it's, it's good. I learned a couple of things. No, but it's good. One of those was talking about the buckets that matter in life. And I'm like, uh, in in relationships, all I really care about, or like in my own life, all I really care about is like three buckets. One is sports, one is learning, and one is laughs. That means three buckets. I'm like, if I get those three, laugh, learn. I, I'm a happy golden. I, I'm more like a, a troop, a black lab, but I, I'm just like, that's it. That's all I need. And that's why I like our little weekend so much. And like what we're missing from that is a little bit of like the learning. We get a lot of sports, a lot of laughs, and we just want to like, rest a little bit but if we had those three buckets it's just like the perfect weekend um so that's that's what i figured out in in like relationships that i really like i think guys and girls ideally it's very similar girls are just you know you can read so you them, broke so up cool. huh? come on dude come on. i don't know i don't know come on i wanted to get your buckets though i didn't mean to like dumb um oh uh, that's gonna be hard on the fly that's gonna don't, be really you don't have to do it on the fly it, learn learn is one of um Oh, the buckets. I'm going to have to come back to next episode. Well, with the buckets. What, what I learned is like... Family's uh, a big bucket for me. Yeah. Um, Family, learn. Like people joke about... Freedom, I uh, think, is, is my other bucket. Uh, yeah. Hey, dude. You want to pass the talking you stick? <laughs> That's fine. Uh, <laughs> I think I came up with my buckets. Uh, freedom. Freedom was one of them. Well, it's basically freedom like... fighters. Uh, they, they should... Hold on. Where was I going? Oh, they should align. But like our friends joke about... Like, I don't care about anything else. So spending money on those things seems really silly to me. Mm. Like, $500 to eat out at a restaurant. If other people like that, and I don't like that at all, it's just like, 
friction, friction everywhere. So, uh, so I'm like soup. It's kind of like Ramit Sethi talks about, like figure out what your rich life looks like and then mercilessly cut on everything else. That was a tough word. Cut on everything else really hard. And, uh, and dude, you just got to align the buckets, I guess. Dude. Um, but, but hey, dude, let me bring it back to something smarter without disconnecting. That was pretty smart. Um, yeah, I think, well, hold on. Yeah, I think I, 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 we're going to see. I like, I like evaluating how my uh, thought process on relationships evolves over time. But if I nail those three buckets, I think I'm a happy clam. Um, yeah, so, I, I, what I think is most people don't, I think a lot of people don't spend, don't really have the time to actually think about those buckets. It's just like yeah. so busy with work, then maybe seeing a couple people and coming home from work tired and going to bed, watching something going to bed. It's just like, it's just autopilot like. But that, I, I, hey, dude, that's a different thread. Well, I feel like thread. they're not like they're not measuring how full that bucket is either because they're so busy. They're just like, hey, there's, they don't know yeah. the buckets exist or what what stage they're at. They're just going on with it's like overall feeling. But I don't know. I think it's kind of mid witty, but kind of not. Um, hopefully you know what that mean means. Meme means. Uh, okay. So my first million. Listening to that, uh, a couple threads coming out of this. I got one, which is on creating. Uh, at the end of this podcast, they're talking about like the best creatives, creatives or artists. Come on, dude. <laughs> the creatives. Dude, That's I've, good, I've had a. Uh, I actually kind of like that. Yeah, creatist. I'm a creatist. Oh, nice, dude. <laughs> it, it's just a little <laughs> bit dirt too. Um, basically, what Sean's talking about in the podcast is he's like. Joe Rogan, Hassan Minhaj, they both are aligned on what the best creatives are like. They're these people that just have complete freedom. It's, I don't give a fuck what anyone says. I'm just going to like make my art. I don't cater to the algorithm. Like I'll take some signal here and there, but I'm really just talking about what interests me uh, and just really not looking at comments or anything. And I'm just like, it just spoke to my soul because I'm like, mm -hmm. why I think our stuff is always going to be so awesome if we can like uh, crack the not worry about money code forever and we can just create whatever we want with this ultimate freedom and just like making each other laugh. That's the ultimate signal. It's like, I, I don't know. Maybe it's just this comp buy of we figured we we're on the right track and now confirmation it's... Confirmation bias. Yeah, sorry. Conf confirmation bias of uh, this is exactly what you should be looking for. It's just like freedom begets like ultimate creativity. And that's what I think we're, we're like in the process of getting. What's strange to me is like, I think most creators, like you hear a lot about creators that literally, if they don't respond to every single comment on their stuff, they're reading every single, like David Dobrik would read every single <laughs> comment on his video, videos. And I'm like, maybe this is because we're entrepreneurs. And so we have this gene of like, we don't care what other people think about us or like we don't care about looking stupid or failing. But I have no, not a single bone in my body wants to go read like every comment. I'm like, we, we, we did the art. We made our art. We did the fun part. Like I have so much fun reviewing our stuff and hitting publish. Right. Not a single bone in my body wants to know what people think about it. Well, that's as long as it's getting me. views. I'm like, oh, okay. We're on the right direction. Right. So you can take like some some little directional signals, but then like people that have already made it or people that like succeeded in the past. I, I sent you this screenshot of this YouTuber that I followed who'd go and like just pick up girls. And this was like 10 years ago that I'd watch his stuff. He'd like go to a college campus and just talk to girls I'm like, well, that's crazy. I see a video uh, this week that's him going and doing the same thing he was doing 10 years ago. I'm like, dude, what are you doing? And you said like, he's married now. I, I assume, I don't know his exact situation, but I remember he had like girlfriend and his stuff and it's like, he doesn't want to do this, but it's like, that's where the views are. I'm like, why do you have to do that? Why can't you just like make money, enough money and not like cater to this uh, stupid 12 year olds that really like this. Um, so just, it's nice to have like, here's the the goal is to be like them. The anti goal is to be like this dude picking up girls, college girls for 10 years straight. Um, so that was one dude. That was one. Dude, that, was, that was a sick thread. Thanks. That was um, a sick thread. Another one, uh, Sean was talking about how and this is kind of tough for like older people to understand, but 
we don't save any money. Like, oh, I, I don't, I have no money really outside of like whatever, maybe 20 grand, but probably all of that has to go to taxes. And I also have like student loan Your, debt. So, like, uh, student loan debt. Basically negative. Um, I'm for that. So, uh, yeah, that Biden really fucking tried to take all the cred for that and they shot him down. Um, would have been sick because I'm a Pell Grant recipient. He's poor. The poor. Right here. Um, but Sean just like feeds into my ego where he's like, hey, it's okay to be poor because you're an entrepreneur. And basically all I have is like a couple years of cash on hand. So like worst case scenario, I have time to figure it out again and make money again. But he has the skills in place where you literally can't make him poor. It's like, I'm still one of the best writers in the world. I'm still one of the best entertainers in the world. I have a great business mind. It's like, that's just a formula for success. Just skills, yeah. It might take I'm, me a couple of years to do it, but I have that money saved already. So that's right. All I'm also even like less entrepreneurial skills. Like in the time between graduating college and us starting this stuff, I went and learned just like a bunch of construction work. And so I'm always like, well, if everything goes to zero, I can go do physical, like I can go do construction, right? Like you got a bad back things. though, dude. You got a I really do, bad back. I do have a bad back. That's why you've only been to half the boys trips. And, and kind of to my point about people not thinking about their buckets enough, a lot of people stop learning new skills mm -hmm. post-college. Um, yeah. Like my mom, who's a doctor, it's like, she doesn't do anything outside of doctoring. So therefore, like she has to save. She yeah. can't reinvent, right? Like, I that's where I wonder. I'm like, why is why is there that difference? Because like I'll have a really long day and I'll I'll just go back and like read things on my phone. Yeah, I had like, like not, the not worst like day yesterday. Instagram post. I yeah. got home and I watched like a 50 minute Zach King interview about YouTube. So it's like terrible day making content. Then I just go home and I just want to learn about content. But what is what is that? Like, do Asperger's. people not have that? I mean, it's got to be, but like. It's something. But that's where I don't know. I, I feel like everyone says, hey, everyone is naturally curious and would do this if they just had like. I don't even want to say like, hey, your mom's just tired after work. And so she doesn't have the energy because sometimes I'll just like want to watch something mind numbing. But like. After 20 minutes, I'm like, dude, this is a waste of my time. Let me read a book. And, and so I, I just think... don't know where, where that dies. Yeah, I don't know. Or it was never born. I'm not sure. I don't know. So much of it is being tired after work. Like so many people just get beat up at work all day. Literally, like they just hate their colleagues. They hate their boss. They're constantly staring at the clock, trying to get out of there. Dude, the last I've, thing they want to come home and whoa. do is like learn or develop skills. I so I remember this feeling because I, I worked uh, speaking of manual labor. I worked as a busboy then waiter, and I remember like going into work was literally look at the clock and then see it tick. And every time you come back into the kitchen, you're like, look at that clock. How much more time do we have before we close? And that's all I cared about. Versus now, when I look at the clock, it's the complete it's like, opposite. Fuck. I'm like, fuck, I only have three hours left. I'm Same. I'm so upset. Like I look at the clock, it's like 4 p.m. and I'm like, "Fuck!" <laughs> like, dude, every there's time. not enough time in the day. It makes me so upset. Yeah, I used I, to be I, the same. I, Fuck. I I yeah, I can't remember the last time I had that feeling of looking at a clock and hoping or it goes babysitting. Faster. Like I did a lot of babysitting. The kids would be asleep. I would just sit on the couch and it was just like 9:08, 9:12. Uh. <laughs> 918 it's like when are these parents going to come home it's just the so clock maybe it just dude sucks uh, yeah that's where i just uh someone had this tweet actually it was jack rains uh some like a friend our age and he, he was saying like hey it's totally cool to have like a job that you just like and just do that because it brings in money i'm like no, that's fucking stupid like you're gonna spend literally half of your waking hours at this job like make it the most awesome thing you can like that is your one job in your 20s is just find whatever that is like yeah, Kevin, Kevin Kelly, um, easy stutter. He says like, that is your job. It's not an easy job. That's why you have to like ask people what you're good at, like go with your gut, what you tend to be good at and just kind of explore things. But that is what the twenties are for. Like fuck the people that go immediately after school into uh, an internship and then into the job that that internship was for. It's like, no dabble, just explore, like take all this time off. Like your one job is to get this right. So don't fuck it up by just diving into the first thing and staying there for the rest of your life. Um, 
Kevin Kelly so even says like Bucks dabble fan. till 35. It's like 35. Yeah. All right. You probably need some stability. Maybe have some kids, but like plenty of time to dabble until then. I mean, the other side is get really rich. Uh, like the, what's the guy? Well, that's uh, what I want to do. I want to be out of the game at 30. Uh, easy 20 minutes. Hold on. I still got threads, dude. <laughs> I, I, I know we can carry them over. It's a rollover podcast, but, uh, let me just see if there's anything else juicy that I had. Uh, how to get rich. That was the pod. Uh, that was the book where he was like, get as rich as possible by 35 and then just fucking do poetry and garden. Yeah. Um, I was, I just want to do a check in. Okay. No, hold on. There's a couple things, a couple. <laughs> one, they're quick though. They're really quick. I promise. Um, I saw the mug. The mug means morning brew. Uh, I sent you this and it was Sam Parr talking about morning brew and morning brew has, it's probably the most successful like startup newsletter uh, in our sphere. Oh, yeah. And they're at 80 million a year in revenue. But to get that 80 million, they have 80 salespeople. And then all the infrastructure around those salespeople to make sure like they execute what they're selling. And it's like this massive 200 person machine in New York City and like all this expensive stuff and just like so much headache. I'm like, dude, that is the epitome selling of an ad. ads. Selling ads. It's like, then, then you look at a Danny Duncan who sells merch and granted it's like, I just subscribed to him by the way. Profit. Once I see like six videos from someone and I'm like, yeah, uh, okay, okay. That's yeah. all it takes. No, they're crazy. Um, he was driving a but, Tesla Model 3 with no doors on it and a bullhorn on the hood. <laughs> that thing is sick. Longhorn. <laughs> um, so it's just like, you see different ways of going about it. One is like, uh, he's selling his merch and like, granted, not it's not all profit, but he's probably making like, made 20 million profit or whatever or more um, with a really lean team. Tim Ferriss is the epitome of like, lean first I, I he's had like i think two or three employees that's it and like some contractors including ourselves easy, easy. Uh, <laughs> but um he really doesn't have much and i'm like i love that so much more than the morning brew like you create this colossal machine and now you have like all these dynamics like we kind of accidentally did that but luckily we're we're focused on smart nonsense which can be really lean with just the illustrator and a couple animators. Granted, we pretty much sold out our whole team, so we don't even know who's animating our stuff anymore, which is a problem. That's um, a different thread. Yeah, that's a different I don't know that we're gonna have to figure. But that's the dichotomy right there. It's like, do you want to be the Danny Duncan driving around in a Tesla Model Three with no doors on it and a Texas Longhorn on the hood, or do you want to be a two hundred person company selling ads in New York? But the problem is, and I actually thought about this response. Like people, I remember I'd say like. Uh, I have an animation company and depending on the balls of this person, they'd ask like, oh, how big is it? Like how many people work for you? Because they're just trying to like, that's almost how always money you make or whatever. Yeah. Cause it's just like the indirect way of figuring out scale. But uh, originally I'd say like, oh, well, they're not really like employees that are maybe like 50 or so. And I'd be like, oh, that's a fucking big number for a 24 year old. Um, I'm like, yeah, awesome. But now as the 25, 26 year old, it's like, whatever number i say it's yeah it's way too many people it's like we have way too much i don't want this i want like one two three four people max and we just do the most with the least um haven't figured that out yet so it's, just, it's that it's that Doing weird like old world least. trying to adjust to the the new world of leverage um hey dude i had i i don't know i dude, don't know. i get a lazy eye on here because i'm looking my screen's so big so I'm looking at you. Do I have a lazy eye? You're I, like 240p for me. Oh, okay. Well, I, I have to like soft focus with my eyes and they're going in different directions. Um, can I say, okay, I, I before we get say off. Say it. Um, uh, say it. Dude, you're, I, I didn't watch it with sound on. I didn't, uh, 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 I didn't really do much other than just observe the beautiful animations. You created Ted. I'll just say it. You created Ted. So what Dylan is referring to. Oh, listen to us just this is the gas up pod. Um, so I'm, my next long form video going out is about Theranos. And it's the first video of ours that has like a proper smart nonsense ad skit in it, like an ad read. And well, you just got to watch the Theranos video. Uh, but well, it's me interacting with an animated thing. And Jan, it, the it, animator, I, I squash it and like its guts are all it's over a the fucking it's, it's amazing. case scene. Yeah, it's, it's sick, dude. It, it was literally like 
this felt like just knock off Ted in, in like a good in a good way, in a dirt way. Um, that'll get even better. But it's like Which it's is why so cool to push the frontier back to the Walt time. Disney. It's like we need to figure out how to make money so that we can go make more Ted movies. It's like <laughs> when our short term money problems are solved, we get to make more movies. Yeah. That's that's what we gotta do. Because uh yeah, the team team that made that sick thing well we can't afford to have them doing our own stuff auctioned off being auctioned all right dude way to end with low t yes sir